Download complete. Initiate playback. Playback. <laughs> Enjoy the show. <laughs> What's up, timekeepers? Welcome to episode 23 of the Me Time Gamer Podcast. How's everybody going today? Me Time Gamer here. Hopefully, you guys are going well. I think I already said my name twice again. Great start. Great start. Uh, so, yeah, how is everybody going? I'm going great today. Hopefully, you are ready for episode 23 of the Me Time Gamer Podcast. Uh, sorry about being a, a day or so late. I had a lot of stuff to do and I didn't have a time to record a podcast uh, on Thursday. So, you're going to get it during the weekend, hopefully. Uh, uh, or, or you will, yeah, definitely the audio version, you'll get it during the weekend. I hope everybody's going well. We got a bit of a bit of a bit of news today, but before I start that, of course, you can catch me, Time Gamer. You can catch me everywhere, of course, uh, if you would like. If you're the first time listening to podcasts, welcome, of course, but if you want to follow me everywhere, you can do so at me, Time Gamer, all over Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, and of course, everywhere on YouTube, where you can catch the video format of the podcast where I put in, uh, videos of the related news images and stuff you're not going to see my ugly mu- mud mug but you will see uh, the, the, gen- the generic thumbnail i did for the episode that week also when i'm not talking about a specific article if you're watching the video format of course thank you so much for watching the video format but you can also catch the podcast pretty much everywhere itunes stitcher google play tune in uh and of course my friends from quebec you can wa- listen to at balado quebec you can catch it there they have that on their website and on there, I think they have a player or two, I'm not sure. Uh, besides that, uh, if you're, it's the first time you're watching the show, even if you're or listening to the show, or you're coming back, of course, the way usually the show goes is I usually talk about what I've been playing since the last podcast, then I move into the news, then I go into a little segment I do every week called Kickstarting It, which this game, the, this week it's actually a pretty cool game. Uh, it, uh, it evolved pretty quick since the first time I wrote it down that I wanted to talk about it to, uh, to right now. And of course, after that, we end the podcast with a bit of the, the promotion stuff, all the blah, blah, blah. You do, we usually leave for the end. So without further ado, let's jump right into what I've been playing. So for the last week, I've been, I jumped back into Fallout 4. I finally decided, because uh, usually the way, lately for the last couple of months, the way I've been wor- doing it is when I'm, um, when I'm streaming, I usually stream games that I'm going to do videos with uh, for the YouTube channel. But I've wanted to go back into Fallout 4 because I haven't played it in so long. So yeah, I, I, I'm right now I'm finishing off uh, like a, a, when I did the, the main mission the first time I finished the Brotherhood of Steel. Then I did all the little side missions and all that, and I decided to go back and um, do uh, the, uh, the the other side missions, uh, the other main missions for the railroads. And then after that, I'm going to be doing the Institute. I think I'm almost done the rail the railroad mission. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I'm pretty. I'm, I'm almost sure, certain. Also, Fallout related. This week, I brought back my um, my uh, Fallout 4 PlayStation 4 mods uh, thing I, I used to do. I'm on. I think I, I with the one this week, last week. I'm up to episode five. So basically, in that that segment, I basically uh, pick three, three, two, three mods that are on the PS4, and then show it to you guys and explain how they work, how to get them, how to activate them, and all those things. Which is pretty fun. I like doing that, and I can't wait for the Creation Club to come out. Those are are actually going to be officially sanctioned mods, so I can't wait to see what's that going to be. If we're going to get like uh, fully voiced mods, because it is like the Creation mods are actually going to be people that are going to work with Bethesda to get the mods working, and they're not going to be repeat mods that you find on PC or Xbox and the PS4, of course. Uh, what else? I think I finished uh, Last of Us Five. Pretty emotional ending. I won't talk more about it. Just go see the last episode five, of course, if you're if you if you're caught up with me. And what else I've been playing? I don't think I've been playing much else. Do I still have my YouTube page open? No, I don't. That's unfortunate. Anyway, yeah, I've been playing a couple more games. A uh, little bit more until dawn. No, I did it. Those are that's a video I played a week uh, more two weeks ago. So that's pretty much what I've been playing for the last two for the last week. It's pretty fun games. There's going to be a lot tonight. Uh, after I'm done recording this and editing this, I'm going to be playing Destiny 2 beta. I'm going to be trying out, so you can definitely check the video out later this week if you're catching the video uh, the podcast when it comes out. And there's plenty more games. I bought another game. I'm going to be trying out, which I'm not going to say. I'm going to leave the surprise for when it happens. 
And yeah, so without further ado, let's move right into the news. All right, so our first little article of news for this week on the Me Time Gamer podcast will be uh, Pokemon Go's first leg- first legendary Pokemon arrives this weekend. This is an article by Allegra Frank over at Polygon. Um, yeah, so uh, so if you guys are interested, I know I know some of you guys are still interested. I still play it once in a while, so I found it interesting for uh, for you guys to mention it to you guys that it's there's still updates coming to the game. All right, so the article starts as follow: Pokemon Go is finally getting legendary monsters starting this weekend, the weekend of uh, July twentieth uh, or twenty first. Uh, trainers around the world will be able to catch their first legendary Pokemon. Pokemon, I guess there's only one. Uh, Pokemon Go Fest attendee will get first dibs on legendary monsters at the sa- at the Saturday, July twenty second event. Players who have tickets to the event in Chicago's Grand Park will have the chance to catch a legendary Pokemon during an epic raid battle. That is, if they catch enough Pokemon to unlock it first. If they succeed into defeating it, Pokemon Go players everywhere will be able to start catching the the same monster at their own local gym. Uh, Starting July 23rd, players will have their chance to team up and have legendary, legendary raid battles with their friend. These monsters will be much the same as typical Pokemon's said that they won't be able to defend gyms. Other than that, they'll be uh, be great for showing off in battle or to friends via your Pokedex. Uh, the first legendary Pokemon appears that day, but more will appear later in the year. There's no hint yet as to which Pokemon this one will be, but we'll find on this Saturday. So that's it for that article of news. Yeah, it's pretty fun. I did try. I had to go out today before I started recording my podcast, and it, is, it was uh, I don't know if they were able to catch because we are the 22nd today. But I did do a little bit of rating. I don't know if, if I was doing it right because I haven't done actually any rating late, uh, since it started. But it did seem kind of fun. I can't wait to see which Pokemon is going to be. So if you're still playing Pokemon, of course, that's information for you guys to go try it out. I live sort of in a corner where there's not a lot of Poke- uh, gyms and stuff like that. So I have to drive like at least 15, 20 minutes to at least get my first Pokemon uh, gym or... Uh, raid battle before i even get a chance so that's going to be it for that first article of news i might as well start off with the easy one first uh the next one is video game related uh it's one it's a book that i enjoyed a lot but the audio book i've listened to uh it's it's a um, it's a movie that i can't wait to go see so this is uh what is the title here here's our first look at spielsberg's ready player one movie so this is an article written by Devintra. Ha- Hard to war. Sorry if I didn't say that that right. This is that over at Engadget. So basically, um, so if you want to see the image that they are showing, it's going to be available uh, the YouTube ver- version of the video at youtubecom gamer. So the article goes as, as follows: uh, Steven Spielberg's abda- 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 adaptation. Jesus Christ, that was a hard word to say. Uh, Steven Spielberg adaptation of Ready Player One will make a big splash at San Diego San Diego's Comic Con next week. Uh, is, isn't it that this week when this article was when was the article written on the 14th so yeah it should be actually it should be out there should be some new news I'll I'll check in a couple minutes here uh, so the article continues um, I've given our first sorry uh, but ahead of the entertainment weekly has given us our first look at the film and well it looks like a lot a lot like the worn out nostalgia filled world described in Ernest Klein's popular novel Front and center is Ty Sheridan as Wade Watts, or Parzival for the online name, wearing a VR headset and haptic gloves. He uses the, that gear to tap into the Oasis, a global virtual reality network that serves as his one escape from his harsh life in the year 2044. Uh, the article continues as follows. What's more in- interesting about the image is how down-to-earth everything seems. The VR headset Watt is using doesn't look too far off from where we're seeing today. In particular, it seems re- reminiscent of the Windows-powered headset currently in the works. And we're also seeing haptic gloves like those from Manus. Uh, that gives us another layer of interaction with vertical, virtual worlds. Hopefully at Comic-Con, we'll also get a glimpse at how Spielberg will v- visualize the VR world of the Oasis. Um, the photo, which shows off Watt's private hideout in, in an old van, packs in plenty of easter eggs there's a classic he-man lunchbox on the right side all along with some garbage pail kids and a garfield 
and Garfield stickers. The newspaper on the left celebrates the launch of the Oasis, as well as the fact that 21 VR headsets have been sold by them. And it's worth noticing that Watt's outfit looks like almost like a character from Back to the Future. Um, so now it continues to explain a bit more uh, who's going to be playing some of the game and stuff like that. So if you, got, if you guys, hopefully you, you're looking at the image while you're listening. This is a this is a book I've listened I've listened to the audio format at least I would have to say uh, four or five times by now. The audio book's about 15 hours long. Uh, so yeah, this 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 game looks ex extremely. Uh, sorry, this uh, the movie. Uh, I can't wait to see it because this is one of my favorite books that I've listened to slash read in a long time. It's 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 it just encompasses everything cool about the 1980s, but also what it would be like to live in a VR heavy world where everybody lives in VR but not in real life, where poverty and is so strong and. I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm going, getting the point across on how good the book, the book re, uh, sort of depicts what the world would be like uh, if we're in like an oil crisis and stuff like that, energy crisis. And it shows how, um, like just for instant, at the beginning of the book, where Wade Watts, the main character, he, he explains a bit how he, where he lives and he lives in what they call stacks. And basically stacks are old trailer park home uh, land where there was trailer parks. And instead of keep it to, to keep to, re, to make room for businesses to make money they actually instead of uh, making the lot bigger they actually expand higher so they stack rvs on top of each other which is a pretty fancy system and then they go on in the beginning of the book to explain how like how how like some some stacks like fall over and break and shit like that so it's definitely something you guys if you haven't read listen or read the book definitely go do it or wait for the movie i, I don't personally one thing i've been thinking about the movie a lot is if the movie will be able to to do justice to the book personally i would have thought that two movies would have probably been good for this to try to depict as much if, if you take into consideration the book like uh it's will wheaton that reads the book it takes about 15 hours if you take maybe half like a quarter to half of it i would say maybe half of it is a lot of description shit going on which you can take out just by simply showing an image you don't have to describe the scenery so you take a lot of that out so i would have to see if they're able to fit most of it i know they in the article i don't know if it's in this article oh no it's in the it's an actual um uh, ready player one um uh, wikia that i saw that they're adding two characters they're not that are not in the the book itself which is not here I don't remember it's like a name it's like one of the top built characters in imdb and even my, me i was like who the hell is this person it's this, this person's not in the book so i can't wait to see what they're gonna do with that i hope they don't they don't go too far away uh it's, oh, it actually says the movie will be out march 30th 2018 um let me just read here but i'm sure there will be plenty of these yeah the, it's march 31st 2018 so We're gonna have to see this next year. It's gonna be fun to look at. Uh, it's a movie I can't wait to go see. It's definitely I, I usually don't go to theaters a lot, but this is definitely one I'm gonna have to uh, to go try out on my own. Uh, definitely look at the image if you if you're not watching the video format. If not, hopefully you guys are enjoying the image as you're seeing it. And uh, yeah, so I think we're gonna move on to the next article of news here. Oh no, wait! Before I move on, there was actually news from San Diego Comic Con. So give me a couple minutes. I'll be right back. I'll go find see if there's anything related to this. All right, so I couldn't find anything else about it, so we'll move on to the other article news I've got here. All right, so the next article in Move is Atari offers first look at Atari Box. This is written by Owen S. Good over at Polygon. We got a lot of particle, Polygon news this week. Uh, so basically, the article goes as follows. A month after revealing it during the E3 2017, Atari has shown the first full look at, at its Atari Box console. In a newspaper, a newsletter to those who signed up for more information, Atari said the unit's four USB ports and HDMI output suggest modern internal specs. It also mean, means that while we will be delivering classic gaming content, we will also be delivering current game gaming content. Sorry about that. I'm drinking a Pepsi. I shouldn't be doing that while I'm recording. It doesn't help. Um, while it's unlikely Atari is going to jump into a market with Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony, the remarks suggest that Atari Box 
will be a little more open-ended than something like the NES Classic or the SNES Classic. Uh, so if you want to go see a picture, of course, that's going to be on the YouTube page or find, go find one. It's actually, it looks like w the way I see it, there's, there's like the, the, oh, the original Atari 2600 looking colors mod, but the, the console is modernized, but it has that, um, Atari 2600 like form to it. Uh, but also they have it in red, like black and red, which looks nice. That's probably the one I would get. Maybe, maybe I, I would get the classic. I don't know. Uh, so the article continues as follows. The black uh, rib look evoked the, the deck of the original Atari VCS 2600. The front panel will be available either in glass or in wood design. And the likewise recall the origin to likewise recalls the original system. And then there's a quote, we know you're hungry for more details on specs, games, future, pricing, and time, etc. The Atari box maker said in the newspaper, uh, there are a lot of milestone challenges and decision points in front of us in the months to ahead. Atari promised regular updates on the, the console's development. So unfortunately, I'm not, I, I'm not too knowledgeable about Atari console itself. Uh, I was not like, I was too young to get into the original uh, Atari 2600 when it came out, if I remember correctly. I don't remember what year it came out. Let me let me go check there. So the original Atari 2600 came out October 1977, and it lasted till 1984. And it was between 199 to 229, which is well, I would say roughly between 400 to 600 dollars current day. I would say. So yeah, so it, it's pre it, it's like it's almost like 11. It's 11 years older than me, so. Of course, I didn't have a chance. I did. I have been. I have had the chance to try once or try twice uh, the original console from people that had the original console, or uh, played actually played some a couple of the games like uh, Adventure and stuff like that. Actually, because of uh, the, the the other piece of news I, I talked about before, uh, Ready Player One mentioned uh, they mentioned the Atari Twenty Six Hundred a lot in that in in that book, and so it's sort of they're almost almost related news, but. So uh, there's gonna, definitely going to be trying out. I can't wait to see if it's going to be more. It, it feels a lot of people are saying it feels more like it's going to be like a SNES classic, uh, NES or SNES classic type thing rather than playing modernized uh, games. Who knows? They might they might surprise everybody and actually release a console and then cl and exclusive Atari games. They're going to build ex exclusively for the Atari box. Uh, like I don't know uh, a 3D remake of Adventure or I don't know what else is there. If I remember, is there Joust? Uh, in in the 2600 and our murder so many games uh, I've never had a chance to play but definitely keep an eye on that there's gonna be definitely more news coming out later about the Atari box itself uh, the next little article of news is uh, the, well the last one is telltale reveals brand new seasons of the walking dead batman and the wolf among us this is an article written by Forbes which is usually not a website I go for for gaming but for some reason every other website uh, games GameStop, GameSpot, IGN. I couldn't find articles unless I didn't look hard enough. But for some reason, Forbes is the first one of the first article that came up. Unless they, because they have a bigger, uh, a bigger push than IGN in gaming. But I have that's kind of weird though. So the article is written by Mitch Wallace, and the article goes as follows: as follows, uh, and it's a freshly published summer 2017 update video, which I'll be playing on the YouTube version of the video if you're listening to the podcast. Uh, Telltale has announced a new and upcoming seasons of three of its popular point-and-click adventure game franchise. First up is the second season of DC Comics' Capped Crusader by the way of Batman, the enemy within. From what's been shown and talked about in the trailer, it seems the most noteworthy inclusion is the unnerving presence of the Riddler, as well as the appearance of psycho psychotic... God damn it. Sorry, if you heard that, the, there's an ad that started in the fucking Forbes website, like... That's annoying. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, as well, an appearance by psychotic Arkham inmate John Doe, a character that referred to internally at Telltale as the Proto Joker. Uh, the enemy within looks to explore more interesting relationship with classic Batman villains, and it's set to premiere in August 2017, so in about a month. Uh, next is the fourth game follow-up to The Walking Dead and New Frontier. Also, what looks to be the last installment of Telltale's successful zombie homage. The Walking Dead, the final season, in its player, uh, yeah, sorry, The Walking Dead, the final season, then it fin the, the, the sentence finishes there, sorry about that, <laughs> trying to read faster than I should. Uh, in it, players directly assume the role of fan-favorite Clementine as she sets off 
on her quest to find AJ. Uh, the developer seems excited to be putting the survivalist hero heroine from front and center this time around as the series comes to a close. The premise seems like a fitting send-off. The final season is due out sometime in 2018. The last game shown in the trailer is a, is a sparkly fresh entry in one of Telltale's lesser-known projects in a comic book-based franchise, no less. Much to e eager fans fr uh, frothing the light, it appears that Wolf, The Wolf Among Us is finally receiving a second season. Uh, like the first, the story will be based around Bill Willingham, Brightly Fairy Tale in New York Fable World, uh, also as well as Bigsby Wolf Inner and Outer Struggle Among the Neon Bad Mysteries of, of Fable Town. The new season is scheduled to drop at the, some point during 2018. So, of course, like I said, you can watch the little video they released. I think it's about uh, five minutes long, if I remember. So, these are cool announcements for Telltales. I know Telltales been they're always they're just going and going at it. I know last month or this month you could get a Game of Thrones all three episodes until the end of the month. Still, if I remember the Game of Thrones, they had their six episode of it. Uh, so yeah, definitely go if you guys enjoyed Telltale. Much more to go. I know some people were criticizing it. I know I ha I have a bit of the same feeling that I think Telltale should take a small break and try to update their engine because I do I do see it when I play when I'm personally playing the games that the game is sort of they're sort of lagging, uh, uh, which they shouldn't in modern console. They should be work they should be optimized properly. But I feel like their engine can't keep up. I know they're saying internally they're updating their engine regularly, but I do feel like their games are a bit weird. They're they're their, their frame rate drops a lot and stuff like that. So it's definitely, hopefully they're able to work on that or they have a separate team working on updating while they're releasing new games. Uh, for uh, I, for Walking Dead, uh, so I can't wait to see what's the final season going to be. I, I'm personally it's like almost done season two. I haven't had a chance to get into season three, but it's definitely seeing images of it and small little clips of it. It, it did look uh, very fun to play. I know some people say that uh, since season season three is not as good as the last two seasons before it, so we'll definitely have to see if season three can like f finish the series uh, uh, the good a good way. And besides that, uh, Wolf Among Us I never played it, and Batman neither. I never played those ones. So definitely, definitely, guys, go go check out the video. It look, it's going to look good. Hopefully, we're gonna and we're gonna see more of it soon. And definitely, I can't wait to see what other projects that Telltale's. I know there, there's Guardian of the Galaxy. Is that out? I don't think it's out yet. I don't remember. It might have been out. I might have missed it completely. No, no, I don't think. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So that's going to be it for the article of news. So let's move on to kickstarting it. I'm Mr. Meeseeks. Look at me. All right. So this, uh, if you don't know what kickstarting it, basically, I reach into the likes of Kickstarter, Kickstarter and Indiegogo. I find a project to promote to you guys. And then I, you guys can go to do support the project if you feel like it or not or whatever. So this week, uh, it's a bit of a special project because first, when I when I explained I explained it a bit at the beginning there, the first time I, I loaded up this project that, or heard about the project when I went to look at it, the project was uh, 20, there was still 27 days to go and they were about halfway, halfway uh, past their goal line. And now, as I'm looking at it, they way past their goal line. I'm still going to talk about it because the game is can is a Canadian-based game. It takes place in Alberta, Canada. So the name of the game is Death Matter, made by Quantum Integrity Software Inc. So basically, uh, what Death Matter is, for a short description of it at the beginning, is it is a rogue light that aims to quench the community's thirst for a title that promptly balances survival mechanics with fulfilling gameplay. So basically, what I was talking about. Um, uh, they have their their goal was was, was for sixty thousand uh, dollars. I think the game is is due out next year or the year after. We'll have to see. I think they have a projected release date of February twenty eighteen. Yeah, so next year. So basically, they they were they have a they had a goal of sixty thousand Canadian dollars, and they are they, right now they're at ninety four thousand seven hundred nineteen dollars Canadian uh, accumulated. So that's why I mean. I felt bad because usually I don't like to promote games that are already uh, fully backed. But this game, I feel it, it has a special place in my heart because it, it's a zombie game. First off, I'm uh, like not like a, uh, not like most people. I really enjoy zombie games. 
and this one is based in Canada in Alberta and I don't find there's a lot of games based in Canada so I, I want to promote it more than other games uh, there's uh, 1786 backers and there's still 25 days to go so you guys that want to keep if you want to go back it it's still up there you can guys can still go back it there's probably going to be um, uh, uh, what did I want to say stretch goals that you guys can uh, can support it for let's go find a little description of the game so death matter is a tr is a true sandbox survival horror players will fight to survive in a zombie packed post-apocalyptic world that fosters whichever playstyle fits you best settle down and defend your home from outside threats with an expansive crafting and barricading system Cultivate, cultivate and live off the land or branch out, explore and scavenge whatever vehicle, weapons and food you may find in a, in a zombie plagued Alberta, alone or with your friends. Originally released as a mod for Crisis 2 back in 2013, Dead Matter has been a long time passion project for us and we're very excited to show you show what we've been working on. So of course the game it it sort of remind me of what like Daisy was supposed to be. So this game seems very this game seems like it's going to be a lot more expansive on that. I know they're also going to release uh, the 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 dev tool so you guys could were so the the modders will be able to create their own maps and stuff. I don't know how easy it's going to be to use because I would definitely would like to try like to create an own, my own zombie apocalypse map. That would be pretty cool. And uh, looking at the video, which of course, once again, you can go see on the video version of the podcast. It's going to be playing right now. Uh, you guys can barricade whatever way you want, how you want. I think they were even talking about like you can eat, like you can even barricade the windows the way you want. If you can put one plank, four planks, or whatever, I, I, it doesn't go into more details, but uh, definitely go check out the Kickstarter page if you want to go see the Kickstarter page. Of course, it's going to be. The link is going to be in the description below, uh, either on the YouTube page or on the uh, MeTimeGamer.com uh, podcast post. You guys can go check out the link there. Uh, is there anything, any other detail? The project, like I said, it's fully funded. Let's see if they got stretch goals. The game apparently is extremely customizable. Let's see. Uh, there's a section here. In Death Mather, the only myths of your player is you. Freedom of expression is an important design philosophy for us as much as we plan our customization system from the beginning to give us to give you as much power over your your protagonist as you want from hair to head to body and you're in control the world of death matter is filled with every manner of weapon you could think of and we will build them from the ground up to support all kind of personalization whether you want to wrap your baseball bat in a barbed wire or go out bashing rig an alarm clock with c4 to go off with a bang or strap up your gun with a makeshift kitchen knife as bayonet. The choice is yours. It doesn't stop there with the weapons. Our vehicle were broken down and designed in part to allow you to transform any run-of-the-mill suburban family van into a apocalypse kitted survivalist dream. And then it keeps going to world, blah, blah, blah. So, you guys, if you want to go check out more information on the game, definitely go go to the Kickstarter page. Like I said, in the description below, the link is there. And it's definitely going to be a game to look out into the future. Just, I just want to make sure there's no stretch goal before I leave. Uh, oh yeah, there is. Uh, so if they reach 75,000, they were going to do a map expansion. So we got that. Uh, planes and train at 85,000, so they reached that. So, and then they have uh, way back west at uh, 120,000. A new sandbox empowered by Vancouver Island, the original Dead Matter mod map. Smaller and denser, Vancouver Island is home to new weapons, new weapons, new vehicles, new clothes, a new place to explore all of, on the coastal landscape that will change the term of survival. You'll also be able to travel between Alberta and Vancouver Island at your leisure, assuming you've got the supplies for it. Uh, then there's going to be at 175,000 interactive AI settlement and faction. And then they have another uh, more stretch goals. Uh, do they have... Okay, requirements, blah, blah, blah. I think that's about it for that. It doesn't say, I think it's only a PC game for now. Looks like it will only be a PC game for Steam. Hopefully they'll be able to make enough money or even get purchased by a, or a, pub, a publisher that they're going to be able to release it on a, a console, because that would be pretty amazing. And that's going to be it for kickstarting it.
All right, guys, that ends episode 23 of the Me Time Gamer podcast. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I really appreciate that. You're you supporting, listening, supporting, sharing the podcast. That what makes it good. I just like it. I just enjoy making the podcast. It's very fun. I'd like to thank you, the listeners, of course, like I just did. Really appreciate you guys listening to, sharing the project. And also, I'd like to thank the music uh, for the intro and outro. Thank you to Technoax. You can also find it at every every thank every person I thank. You can find their uh, links in the description below of the video or into the uh, podcast uh, show notes over at MeTimeGamer.com. Techno acts for the intro and outro music, and also the artists that provide the uh, uh, the music that I play during the podcast. Those when I select after, so I can't I can't tell you who they are right now. Uh, of course, you can follow me everywhere on social media, Me Time Gamer, just using Me Time Gamer, uh, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, and over on YouTube, where you can find the, uh, all the videos that I post during the week, uh, Monday to Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. If you'd like to support the podcast, you can do so going to patreon.com forward slash me time gamer or over there for three dollars a month. You can support the pod, show your support for the podcast. There is anything special I can offer for for that tier. There's only one and it's just to show your support and maybe in the future as the show progress uh, as all the content because it's not just for the podcast. It's for the video formats for the Twitch. It's to upgrading my my hardware that I use for recording and stuff like that course if you want you want to leave a comment critique or you want me to uh, talk about something during the show definitely leave me a, leave me an email at podcast at metimegamer.com or if you want to if you have to, if you'd like to um, sp- if you'd like to sponsor the podcast you can do so over at contact at metimegamer.com if you're watching the video format i really appreciate it. if you'd like the video and subscribe to the channel so that's going to be it for this episode of the me time Gamer podcast thank you so much guys for watching now i'll see you in the next episode or all the other videos keep on keeping on.